so today our topic of discussion is pharyngitis which is a very important topic in the microbiology in the respiratory system section so we are going to read about pharyngitis today what is the meaning of the pharyngitis the literal meaning of pharyngitis is the sore throat which we all must have come across in our life at one or the other point of time so we are going to read about the pharyngitis so if the examiner i want to ask you about the pharyngitis uh, chapter then he may he or she may give you two types of clinical scenario either he will give you this clinical scenario or he will he or she will give you this clinical scenario depending on the clinical scenario that the examiner has put in the question you have to diagnose the case and accordingly answer the uh, questions after that so uh, if the clinical scenario involves th uh, the enlarged tonsil tonsil plus there is purulent white fibrinous exudate over the tonsil then you have to diagnose it as the pharyngitis but the causative organism here will be the streptococcus pyogenes which is the most common cause of the uh, sore throat or the pharyngitis if the clinical presentation is like this there are some other uh, bacteria also which can cause the sore throat with the similar features like this those are the neisseria gonorrhoeae the beta other beta hemolytic streptococci the arcanobacterium hemolyticum etc etc so you have to remember these four names because these are the most important causative uh, agents but the point is that the examiner very rarely give you this type of clinical scenario the examiner wants to give you this type of clinical scenario because he wants to uh, question you about the corin bacterium diphtheria that's why he or she tends to ask about the pharyngitis which is caused by the corin bacterium diphtheria so for uh, answering the questions related to the corin bacterium diphtheria you have to first diagnose uh, uh, the case of the uh, diphtherial pharyngitis based on the clinical scenario so the clinical scenario if involves that there is a grayish white covering over the tonsil that is also sometimes uh, mentioned as pseudo membrane over the tonsil or if the examiner uh, gives you a history of bleeding on removal of the pseudo membrane and also informs you about the extension of the pseudo membrane to the larynx then you have to diagnose the condition as the fossil diphtheria you have to simply diagnose it as the fossil diphtheria and thereby after that you have to ask the i mean you have to answer the other questions which are given okay so the most important points in the clinical scenario are the bleeding on the removal of the membrane let me change the color of the pen so that you can notice it efficiently so if the uh, in the question they give you a history of bleeding on removal of the membrane that is a very typical finding which is seen in case of the fossil diphtheria that you should keep in mind plus the color of the membrane is also a very peculiar feature uh, that is found uh, in case of the fossil diphtheria which is gray is white in color so in if this type of clinical features are given in the question you have to answer or diagnose it as the case of fossil diphtheria and thereby answer the next questions so uh, before going uh, to the uh, diphtheria corin bacterium diphtheria proper we have to first uh, uh, talk about the corin bacterium genus a little bit okay because the corin bacterium is a very big uh, genus which contains many species and those uh, some of those species are very important for us uh, from exam point of view from the mcq point of view rather okay so we will see them first so uh, the corin bacterium genus as we have discussed uh, that uh, contains a number of species now the important points about the corin bacterium is mentioned here you have to just remember these all points like the corin bacterium is a gram positive bacteria it is non capsulated it is non sporing and it is non motile so see everything is non 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 okay 
but it is not negative it is gram positive so these all points should be uh, remembered for all of the corine bacterium now corine bacterium are further classified into two parts one is the corine bacterium diphtheria that has got a separate uh, topic on it uh, which we will discuss in our uh, next video and the other species are together called as the diphtheroids there is certain point of difference between the corine bacterium diphtheri and the diphtheroids okay this diphtheroid include many species of the corine bacterium those are like the corine bacterium ulcerans the corine bacterium pseudotuberculosis the corine bacterium gerosis the corine bacterium bovis and the corine bacterium hemolyticus there are some other species as well but for the time being you have to remember these all species of the corine bacterium under the diphtheroids okay now uh, some important points about the corine bacterium diphtheri is that this is also called as the Klebs lofler's bacillus Klebs lofler's bacillus and out of all the uh, species of the corine bacterium this is the most important pathogen causing the pharyngitis plus it has got some peculiar features uh, which separates it from all these diphtheroids okay which separates it from all these diphtheroids we will see those uh, differential points between the corine bacterium diphtheri and the diphtheroids next so coming to the differences between them so the differences are that the corine bacterium diphtheri uh, if we make the gram staining of the culture of the corine bacterium diphtheri we see that there is cuneiform arrangement of the bacilli there is cuneiform arrangement of the bacilli which is also sometimes referred to as the chinese letter arrangement see here we ha i have made the i have made the arrangement of the corine bacterium diphtheri it somewhat looks like chinese letters but the diphtheroids has a different arrangement that is the palisade arrangement they are arranged parallelly on the gram staining plus the second point of difference is that the corine bacterium diphtheri has metachromatic granules if you can uh, if you see this uh, you know this bacilli uh, very clearly i have made uh, at the poles of each of the bacilli if you see each of the bacilli at the poles there is some uh, bluish granules at the poles while the uh, bacteria is appearing green okay so those uh, bluish dots at the poles are called as the metachromatic granules these metachromatic granules are absent in case of the diphtheroids and but 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 there is an exception to this rule what is that the difference uh, the exception to this rule is that the corine bacterium gerosis is one uh, one one type of diphtheroid which also shows this metachromatic granules generally all of the diphtheroids do not show this metachromatic granules but corine bacterium gerosis shows this metachromatic granules feature so as there is whenever there is entry of exceptions there is entry of a potential mcq question as well so that means that means uh, this corine bacterium gerosis is a potential mcq question as well because it is it has a it has got a peculiar feature out of all the diphtheroids now coming to the some uh, important features about the diphtheroids and the corine bacterium diphtheri so uh, if first of all we we'll talk about the corine bacterium diphtheri that is the corine bacterium diphtheri uh, causes the disease by producing the diphtheria toxin that means the corine bacterium diphtheri itself does not causes uh, any pathogenesis rather it just produces the diphtheria toxin and whatever symptoms that appear in the patient are due to the diphtheria toxin only not by virtue of the bacteria so bacteria just as a badnam hai asli kaam to uska toxin karta hai in case of diphtheria ye yaad rakhna so uh, if we talk about the diphtheroids then in the diphtheroids 
those diphtheroids are the normal commensals in the throat skin etc so generally they do not cause the infection to the human okay that's why they are good to us now again we have got some exceptions here also so these diphtheroids generally do not produce the diphtheria toxin but there are two such diphtheroids which produce the diphtheria toxin those are the corin bacterium ulcerans and the corin bacterium pseudotuberculosis which is also called as the prisnocard bacillus prisnocard bacillus so again whenever there is entry of exceptions there is entry of potential mcq question so here also two mcqs enter in your world of microbiology that is which uh, which two uh, diphtheroids can produce the diphtheria toxin okay so those are the corin bacteria ulcerans and the corin bacterium pseudotuberculosis or the prisnocard bacillus that is a fancy name that this pseudotuberculosis has got so that's all about the pharyngitis first part next in our next videos uh, i will talk about the uh, corin bacterium diphtheria in particular so stay tuned till that video